Let's look at another example. Recall the problem that you, as a production engineer, were encountering at Norman's fourth largest cracker factory. You're considering two different layouts for the factory floor, layout A and layout B. Instead of comparing mean daily throughput, measured in pallets of cracker boxes for each factory layout, we want to examine the proportion of daily throughputs that fail to meet the company goal of 800 pallets per eight hour shift. For proportions, we usually want to have a large number of observations, and it's obviously too costly to rearrange the factory floor to collect real observations, so we should simulate, say, 100 different eight hour shifts. With layout A, 15 sh shifts fail to result in 800 pallets, and for layout B, eight shifts fail to result in 800 pallets. Let's find a 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportions of shifts meeting the daily goal between layout A and layout B. Okay, so from layout A, we'll call that population one, we collected a sample of size 100. And we found Y1 equals uh, 15 successes, okay? Those were the uh, number of shifts that failed to meet our, um, our goal of 800 pallets per day. So P hat here, just 15 over 100, which is 0.15. Okay, in two, this is from layout two, we collected uh, 100 uh, eight hour shifts. And we found from those 100 that eight failed to meet our throughput requirement. So our estimator for the proportion of, of uh, days that, meet, that fail to meet uh, the requirement would be eight over 100, which is 0.08, okay? And so we want a confidence interval for the difference in population proportions, okay? So we want a confidence interval, just so we're clear here, that tells us somewhere in there we are some amount of confident that this true uh, difference in proportions lies, okay? So let's say we want to be 95% confident. That says that alpha is 0.05, okay? So what is our uh, equation for the confidence interval? It's P1 hat minus P2 hat, okay? That's our uh, point estimate. We're gonna add to it and subtract from it a margin of error that's a function of variability, sample size, confidence. Here's our measure of confidence, and here's our measure of variability in sample size. It is the standard deviation of our sampling distribution. Okay, so all we have to do is just plug these numbers in. So we've got 0.15 minus 0.08 minus 0.08. Add to it and subtract from it a Z value associated with 0.025 in each tail. Okay, if we want to be 95% confident, the value of Z that we're going to use is 1.96. Okay, that's the number that we probably have memorized it's not just here, it's also here, 1.96. Uh, we got 0.15, 1 minus 0.15 over 100, plus 0.08, 1 minus 0.08 over 100. Okay, if we work this out, <clears throat> we should get a lower bound of negative 0.018 and an upper bound of 0.158. Okay, these would be this is the, the set of bounds for the difference in proportions of throughputs not meeting our goals between layout A and layout B. So what does that say? Well, we've got a negative lower bound and a positive upper bound, okay? That says zero is in there somewhere. So we're, uh, we don't have a whole lot of faith that really the, the difference in these two layouts uh, is zero. That is, the two layouts perform roughly the same way with respect to the proportion of defective units, okay? On the lower bound, we have a negative number which says that P2 produces a larger amount of defective units. And on the upper bound, we've got a positive number which says P1, that is the uh, layout A, uh, is uh, a larger number of, of, um, of days that are shifts that didn't meet our specification.
Okay? So this is kind of an inconclusive, if we're wanting to draw the conclusion about which layout is better, this is kind of inconclusive. Okay? Uh, but we do have a set of bounds for uh, the difference in the proportions of days that don't meet specifications uh, between layout A and layout B.